So the year is 1997 and a woman by the name of Mary falls in love and has sexual intercourse and then creates life from that. Now, this may not seem like a big deal to some, but I want you to take into consideration that at this time, Mary is 34 and the young man whom she had this relationship with is 13. In 1997, Mary was convicted for second degree child R of a 12 year old because he was 12 when it started and his name is Villy. So she was 34, mother of four, who was married and the R occurred or what I'm for the purposes of this video, I'm going to call sexual assault because that's what it was. Even if he could, you know, consent, he was 12. And as a result, charges were filed. She was found guilty. She served some time. They let her go. She served some more time. And then eventually she married this young man. So the link is going to be listed below for this video that was on YouTube of an interview that was done several years ago. And at this point in the interview, this man, because he's now a man of 35, and this woman who at the time was 56 is married. One of the things that's asked in the interview is if this is a love story or if this is a story of years of child abuse. You all will please <laughs> let me know your opinion down below and I'm going to give you mine right away and say that to me, this was years of child abuse. Now, before you get too upset, um, we now know that the couple is no longer together. Shortly after the interview, they got divorced and then about a year or so after that um, divorce, she passed from colon cancer. So, Mary wants the world to know that the papers got it wrong and the media got it wrong because the papers are making it seem like this was a student-teacher dynamic. But by the time they were involved, she was no longer his teacher. She taught him during the second grade when he was like eight years old. And their relationship began when he was, uh, what, in the sixth or seventh grade, when he was 12 and 13 years old. So she just wanted to make sure we knew that. Not that to me it makes a difference, but she kept bringing up the fact that uh, she wasn't his teacher in the, in the long version of the interview. So what I noticed about the interaction is when certain questions are being asked, it seems as if... Mary can remember vividly what happened. She talks about certain events, kind of like a, a, a teenager talking about her first love, whereas Billy seems to be a little bit more foggy on some things, a little bit more hesitant about some things. So at 34 and 13, Mary said she did not feel like she was doing anything wrong. She does not feel like Billy was a little boy. According to her, he was 13 and there are people who are incarcerated in their state that are 13 that were considered adults. Are you guys seeing the type of foolishness that went on during this interview that this woman tried to correlate her having sexual relations with a child to the fact that there are children in prison in adult prisons based on the crimes they committed. And if you ask me, she should be right there with those those uh, people for the crime that she committed. She said they are not considered little boys because they've gotten life sentences. We find out that the first time she was caught with Villy at an inappropriate time was by police in a marina, they thought that there was a drunk driver that was parked there. They asked her to roll down the window and they realized that it was a woman who was in a t-shirt, Mary, and then Billy was in the back of the van sleeping. One of the officers didn't feel like the scene looked right 
and he wanted to report it. Nothing came of it and they let them go because she called, they called the mom. The mom said that she knew them. And really, if you ask me, because it was a woman and a boy, they, they let this situation go. I feel like things would have been handled a lot differently if this had been an adult male and a, a little girl. So they continue dealing with each other. They continue sleeping around and having intimate moments. And then eventually a rumor was put into the paper that a sixth grade student got a teacher pregnant, which led to further investigation. Now, people were trying to wreck through their minds who this person could be, who this kid could be. And none of them who knew her thought that it would be Mary. But Mary was so disrespectful that not only did she have intercourse with this young man, but she did it in her home where her husband and her children were. At one point, he even said they showed actual interview where Villy said that they did it on the roof one time of her house. This is just the, the type of things that they were doing, okay? So as the interview progresses, Matt is asking her various questions and there's a point where we see Mary get offended because Matt, the interviewer, is saying that she pursued things with Villy and she disagrees with the fact that she pursued them. He says, but Mary, you were the adult. And she looks at him and says, really? Looks at Billy, Villy, and says, Who's the boss? Who's the boss? Who's the boss? Because she didn't like the fact that Matt said that, that she pursued this child, but that's what she did. And then Billy, with his head kind of down and looking at her, says, it was me pursuing you. She then repeats again, who's the boss? Who was the boss? Who was the boss? Who was the boss? Billy says, he feels like it's getting weird. He already said that he pursued her. Whereas Matt is like, okay, whether he you feel like he pursued you or not, he didn't pursue you because he was 12. But she wants it to be known that he pursued her because in her eyes, age doesn't matter. And that is the problem. People like this who prey on children need help and they need to be put away. Because I'm going to be honest, I'm looking sideways at a lot of people in this situation, a lot of the adults that he was around. I understand that his mom was a single mom of four and that he came from a broken home and that his father had like 16 kids and five different wives and all these other things at various times. But once this story came out and I found out that my child had relations with this woman, um, she wouldn't have to worry about having a hard time staying away from him or vice versa because I end up being in jail. I'm just going to keep it honest. Please have my bill money ready and hope that I don't hurt her to the point where I can't get out. I can't imagine my son being six years old and having an educator prey on him. I'm sorry, not six, 12 and have the educator prey on him. It's just not right. So they talk about how they got close and things got crazier. There was a lot of different things going on in both of their lives and that drew them closer together. I don't understand how she could be so drawn to, to a child, especially one who I believe was a year or two older than her oldest son. So eventually her husband found out. As I said earlier, all of this was going on while she was living at home. And what happened was her husband found letters that were very descriptive that confirmed that not only was she having intimate, uh, intimate relations with someone else, but that it was a boy. Imagine knowing that your wife was not only cheating on you, but cheating on you with someone who was around the same age as your oldest child. When he found out, he did what any smart person would do. He moved out, which I wouldn't have moved out. I would have kicked her out, but he moved out. And her husband's cousin, who knew about the information, notified the school district about the situation. And that's when things started happening. So according to Mary... She says she didn't know that it was criminally wrong 
to be with a minor because she was a woman. She did this whole spill about how she knew it was wrong for men and all these other things, but she didn't know that it was wrong for women. And if she would have known that it was a crime, then she wouldn't have done it. But she's lying because even after she was sentenced, even after she did some time, she slept with him again. So she said, it's absurd to think that 13 year olds are not having sex to also try to justify yet again, why it was okay that she did that. She said, 13 year olds aren't kids. I beg to differ. No, it's not absurd to think that teenagers are having, having sex, but it's absurd to think that a woman, a grown behind woman would think that it's okay to sleep with a teenager. She says that she pled guilty because she was tricked into it and that we don't know the circumstances of what brought them together. But what we do know is that Mary slept with a child, regardless of what the circumstances were. He was a child. He was 12 when it began. She pled guilty to second degree R. She did six months. She got out. She was told the stipulations are that she can't um, have certain interactions with him. She can't be with him. She can't see him. All right. As soon as she got out, she met back up with him. They were even communicating, I guess, during different parts of all of this. But she met back up with him. They went on some date to the movies, pulled over, fog, the windows were fogged. They were making out in the car. A uh, Police pulled them over. Well, not pulled them over because they were already, already pulled over. The police questioned them. She gave them a false name. They already recognized who she was. And she ended up right back in the same court with the judge that previously sentenced her. After that she was told that she had seven and a half more years. And while in prison, she found out that she was pregnant with their second child. So now this man is 35, married this woman in 2005, had children with her, feels like at her age, now that he's that age, that he doesn't see how she did that and that he could have never did what she did But you can tell that he's uncomfortable to say it in front of her because when that question is asked in front of her, he kind of skirts around it. Despite all of this stuff, and he said in some other interviews, because I, I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole with reading some things about him. At one point, he talked about how he had problems with alcoholism and all these other things. And I'm sure that some of this had something to do with it. I think that he felt like he was obligated to be with this woman because he wanted the family for his daughters that he never had. Even when they were talking to his daughters, his daughter said that in the beginning, they didn't look at him like he was their father, but he looked, they looked at him more like, okay, now he's kind of their father. The, the youngest one at the time of this interview was moving out of the house and he was 35. So it goes to show you, in my opinion, that he was groomed. And I don't even think to this day that he realizes is that what it is, that that's what it was. And I kind of wonder about the people who surrounded him because even for them to get married, he petitioned the courts because at the time they weren't even supposed to be having contact with each other. So it just seems like he just, he was stuck. You all, I know this was a little all over the place. I'm going to leave um, the link to both of the interviews so that you can see the long one. The long one gets you really, really annoyed with her because you just see how much she rambles and stuff like that. The shorter one gets straight to the point of things, but you all pick, you know, if you want to look at it or not. Just trying something else to see the response. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. And until next time.